Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Divorce is very difficult. If you think it was difficult to be married, and that's why you divorced. If you have children, it's not easy to be divorced. Nonetheless, we will help you deal with the difficulty of going through divorce by learning what Allah Almighty has ordained. So Allah speaks about it in the Quran that when you have a marriage and it is struggling, you need to give it your best. You need to try to resolve the matters between the two of you in a fair way, understanding that it's a give and take. You need to be, a, be lenient upon one another, not just one party being lenient, but both being kind towards each other and considerate of each other. If you cannot solve the problem between the two of you, you involve parties from either side, let them get together, try to solve the matters. If the matters are not being resolved, as a last resort, you may go through a divorce. That divorce is something very sacred in the sense that you can't play with it. You can't joke about it. If you joke about it, it occurs. If you play with it, it still occurs. So remember, don't joke about divorce ever. Don't ever, as a Muslim, just blurt out talaq thrice or I divorce you thrice and then come trying to understand what exactly did I do. I always say it's like shooting someone with live rounds and then coming to say, what did I just do? I didn't know that the trigger would actually result in a bullet coming out. Silly, isn't it? But Allah Almighty tells us that you will have to fulfill the rights of your exes, especially when you have had children. When you don't have children, it's a smaller right. Number one, do not mudsling. Don't speak bad about one another. The world doesn't need to know your whole story because you're going to badmouth someone. It could have been that shaitan came in and didn't allow you to get on with each other. And therefore, the worst of you was apparent. And the goodness is never spoken about. You ended up not getting along. You ended up divorcing. But you're not supposed to be talking bad about one another. Look, we didn't get along. If someone specific comes to you and says, I'm interested in marrying your ex, can you tell me what happened? In brief, you're allowed to make mention of some of the difficulties. You are, because they need to know. But the general public doesn't need to know. So remember, if you want to deal with the difficulty of divorce, guard your tongue. Watch what you say about your ex. Secondly, the men have to provide for the ex-wife for a certain period of time, a certain amount, they should do that. That is an act of worship. It's Allah telling you, listen, you're going to have to do this, whether you like it or you don't like it. It's the last thing you are going to have to do for the period of the idda. You're going to have to provide for her this, this and this. Don't be miserly and don't run away from that right. Those men who run away from the mahar, which is the gift that's initially given to the bride, those who run away from the post-divorce expenses being paid, they will not have barakah and blessings in the rest of their wealth because in their wealth, they have the right of someone else. That's very dangerous. So therefore, give it. No problem. Give a little bit more if you want. The Quran speaks about those who have more. Giving more, it's part of their goodness. So remember this. It's Allah's favor upon you that you have wealth. Give from it or at least Tell them, I owe you and I will slowly pay you. I will give you certain expenses. This is something very, very important. Now, like I said, when you don't have children, it probably ends there. You have to speak well and you have to give them whatever is due to them. And that's about it. As time passes, you may, part, you may cross paths and so on. Just bear in mind, don't say nasty things. You have a life. He or she has a life and we need to continue. Pray for them. No matter how bad they were, pray for them. I know I've heard people saying, I'll never pray for them. But we have to be here to encourage you to consider that because it's a noble characteristic. Similarly, if, you've have, if you have had children and you're going through a divorce, you're going to have to have a big heart because those children do not belong to you alone. Those children do not belong to you alone. Allah is watching you and Allah is going to deal with you. If you think you're going to fix your ex by 
not giving him or her access or custody without a solid, valid reason. And what are valid reasons? If there was sexual abuse or there was some major abuse that was happening, trauma to the kids, that is a different case. The scholars and experts need to look into each case one by one. But we're talking of the general cases in more than 90% of the time. You're going to have to have a very big heart. You're going to have to navigate through a few factors. The new spouse that will come in, plus your children, how to work out access and custody, and who is going to communicate with who. You need to work that out. So the difficulties of going through divorce, not simple. Many men out there as Muslims, because they have the power of issuing the divorce, they leave their women hanging in the sense that the woman is neither divorced nor is she married. You're not fulfilling her rights. You're treating her badly. You're abusing her because you know that she might not have anywhere to go to. But Allah is watching. My brother, you will pay a price for this. It's not worth it. As you grow older, the sickness, the disease, whatever else might come with your old age, the lack of barakah, a lot of punishment that Allah will definitely meet out to you as a result of you keeping someone hanging against what the Quran says. Allah says you either marry to her with goodness or leave her with goodness, but don't leave her hanging that she's neither married nor is she unmarried. Lisa. Release her with goodness. فَإِمْسَاكُمْ بِمَعْرُوفٍ أَوْ تَسْرِيحٌ بِإِحْسَانٍ As simple as that, Allah tells you, this is someone's child, this is my worshipper, I created this particular person, I want you to treat them with goodness, keep them with you in goodness or release them. Release them with goodness. You're keeping them as per the norms in a nice good way or you release them in a good way. There's no point to be evil towards your ex-spouse or towards a spouse who needs to be divorced, for example. It's no big deal. It's not the first, nor is it the last. If that's the last resort and you've gotten to it, rather than just kick them aside and make them suffer, do whatever you have to. Do the needful. Some people don't issue a talaq because they know that I will have to give the mahar. Rather, you get what is known as a khula. A khula is when a woman applies for uh, a divorce from the man with a settlement of giving the mahar back for no reason. I don't really have a reason. I don't like your face anymore. I just want this. If the guy agrees, Alhamdulillah, it's done. And he's, he's encouraged to agree and only to take the mahar that he gave back. Not more than that. In some cases, some people settle for more than that, but it's against the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. But sometimes a woman is forced to go to the scholars or the qadi where there is a shari court to apply for what is known as a fasq. And that is a nullification. Nullification means I have reasons. When you have reasons for the divorce, he cannot come and claim the mahar back and ask you for money and so on. They will cancel and nullify the marriage without him. Many men don't know this. We don't need you in order to issue a decree of nullification. Not at all. We just need proof that you did not fulfill the basic rights as a spouse for X amount of time. And that's it. We can give you a warning, depending on what exactly it is. Sometimes it's a serious matter. And the panel of scholars or the scholars or the qadi, the judge, will issue a nullification and declare the woman no longer the spouse of so and so. And he can jump and scream and yell. That is no longer his wife. If he wants, he needs to get a new nikah, new marriage with her, officiate a new marriage with her. But he can't just have her back. So Allah does come to the rescue of those who are struggling. Sometimes you don't know. And sometimes the scholars don't really help. Sometimes the panel or the judges sometimes might delay a little bit. But if you look at the secular laws, it is that way in every case. May Allah make it easy for us. I've only touched on this. I'd like you to consider when you're getting divorced, what I've said today and make it easy for your ex and you don't need to have a relationship with her just because the kids are the excuse. You can always have a third party deal with it or three people in a group chat dealing with the problem. Let it be. And don't be hard on your ex. Because if you are hard, especially when you've had children, you pay the price. May Allah Almighty forgive us all. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallama ala nabina Muhammad.